If I'm angry with you and I want to have a fight, the thoughts that will come to me will be in keeping with that motivation. And, and the perceptions as well, like I'm yeah. going to transform you or face even into yeah. a target, right? I'm going to allow the voice of anger to make itself manifest within me. But all prayer is, is it's communicating with God. And I don't think it has to be sophisticated. I think it needs to be genuine and from the heart. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this one, we have Greg Laurie being interviewed by Jordan Peterson. And I love this one because Jordan Peterson kind of corners him to bring out his own personal testimony, Greg Laurie's testimony. And he goes back to talk about the hippie days and how he started to finally find the truth, which is Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And he found Jesus during the hippie days. So we'll let him give the testimony. And at the back end, I'll give you my personal perspective with the biblical context. Here we go. Okay, so now back to the Jesus freaks. Now you were watching them as a relatively young teenager yeah. and you thought there was maybe something there. Yeah. And so you got curious about that. And, and, but you were also skeptical and you said something about praying. And then that, that, that was something that changed your life. So can you, can you relate that? Okay, here's what it came down to. This guy who was preaching, his name was Lonnie Frisbee. He said, come up here and and I'll lead you in a prayer. And I walked up there and I thought, this isn't going to work. Where, where were you? you I'm high school, a, high school. It's high school at lunchtime in Newport Harbor High School in Southern California and uh, Newport Beach, California. So I'm, I'm at, it's lunchtime. I've walked forward in this public meeting that I was kind of attending. I was far enough away where I wouldn't be looked like I was a part of it, mm -hmm. but close enough where I could kind of eavesdrop. No one mm -hmm. invited me. Normally mm -hmm. people become Christians because someone invites them to church or they share the gospel with them. No one did that for me. But, but I walked over to this evangelist and other kids were praying. He said, pray this prayer with me. And you know, Jordan, this is a prayer that that I've led people in for over 50 years. And I've seen their lives changed. And there's nothing magical in this prayer. It's just a prayer based on biblical principles. But all prayer is, is it's communicating with God. And I don't think it has to be sophisticated. I think it needs to be genuine and from the heart. And the prayer went something along the lines of, God, I know I'm a sinner, but I know Jesus Christ is a savior who died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. And, and, and I asked Jesus to come into my life. I didn't know what I was doing, but I believed it. And, and I didn't have an emotional experience, though people next to me did. One was laughing, one with joy. One was crying, maybe over their sins. I felt nothing. And I thought, it, it, that figures, God rejected me. But that I marked that day in 1970 is the day that Christ literally came into my life. And it changed everything for me. In fact, that weekend, we had planned to go out into the mountains and, and take and smoke weed. And I went out with my friends and, and I broke away. I felt like being alone. I had this little baggie full of weed and a pipe. And, and it just dawned on me, I don't want to do this anymore. And I don't know why I felt that way, but I thought, I don't want this anymore. And so I, I said, God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. And I threw my pipe away and my way. So and, that's a sacrificial yeah, gesture. Yeah. And it was, and there was no one talking to me. No one explained like what we do when someone prays at one of our events. We're there to explain it. We give them a Bible. We're there to follow up on them. No one did any of this for me. <clears throat> but, you know, God says those that seek me will find mm -hmm. me. You know, the book of Proverbs and Jeremiah, they both bring up that when you seek the Lord, you will find him. And Greg Laurie mentions that, how, you know, the Bible does say when you seek God, you'll find him. And I'll give you a little, a little testimony real quick. You know, I was working at a church at the time, and I remember cleaning windows. I was making like $7.25 an hour. And I was like 19, 20 years old. I'm thinking, what am I doing with my life? I'm cleaning windows, cleaning toilets, very humbling. But God, what do you? what's your plan? And I remember hearing this voice in my heart, not audible, but in here, because I was talking to him in my mind and in my heart at the moment as I'm cleaning windows. And he said, Daniel, when you seek me, you will find me. And when you find me, then you'll find yourself. And that was a profound moment in my life because then I realized, you know what? If I just keep seeking God, he'll lead me in the direction I need to go. So I just wanted to share that. Let's continue on. And I think if we genuinely reach out to God, God will respond. 
You don't have to do anything perfectly. It just needs to be a movement of your heart toward God. And as much as I knew as a 17 year old kid, I, I took that step of faith. And, and that is when my life began to change. And, and I've led people in this. So well, your thought, your thoughts do make themselves manifest to mm. you in keeping with the spirit of your aim. Mm. So you, you can think about this. So there's, there's a long history since the early 1960s of study into a phenomenon known as the orienting response. And the orienting response is a collection of psychophysiological responses that orient you towards a goal. Yeah. Well, so imagine that when you envision a goal, yeah. you see a landscape appear in front of you in relationship to that goal. Mm -hmm. And it, it's quite straightforward to understand. I mean, if I wanna walk across the room through an open door, the first thing I do is look at the door, right? So now I've oriented my aim towards right. the door. Now I can see a pathway to the door and I can see obstacles yes. and pathways. I can see things that'll move me forward and things that'll get in my way. And that is the, that is the landscape of perception. There's an aim and a pathway yeah. and there's obstacles and facilitators that, yeah. and you're always in that. Yeah. Okay, your thoughts work that way too. Mm -hmm. So once you orient yourself towards an aim, the thoughts that come to you will be, will have the voice of the spirit of that aim. Like mm. this is technically how thought works. So All right, so in this part here, I thought this was profound. Jordan Peterson kind of breaks down something from a psychological uh, standpoint. And that is that your mindset ultimately dictates the way you feel and think. And I don't know if he knows the scripture or not, but it says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, you know, your heart and your actions are just a byproduct of your thought pattern, what you're thinking. What you do today is what you're going to be tomorrow. What you think today is what you're going to feel today and feel tomorrow. And Jordan Peterson, that's why I love watching him because he brings things that's biblical to a psychological mindset. I like going to that place because many people aren't teaching from a psychological standpoint. So anyways, I just wanted to share that part. Let's continue on. If I'm angry with you, and I want to have a fight, the thoughts that will come to me will be in keeping with that motivation and, and the perceptions as well. Like I'm yeah. going to transform you or face even into yeah. a target, right? I'm going to allow the voice of anger to make itself manifest within me. So now right. imagine that I reconfigure my aim so that I'm aiming however imperfectly for the highest thing I can mm -hmm. conceive of, however imperfectly. Well, that's the voice that's going to respond to the inquiries. Mm -hmm. Like that's technically true. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that means metaphysically, no, because but it does imply that this is a terrifying thing to realize yeah. is that well, every aim is a prayer. And every spirit that responds to your aim responds in the voice of the spirit of that aim. Mm -hmm. And this is a terrible thing because it means, for example, if you're possessed by resentment, yeah. it's the eternal spirit of vengefulness that will make right. itself manifest in your heart. That's like, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. And so, well, there's no reason to assume at all that that wouldn't have happened on the positive side. Okay, so now you made a gesture. Yeah. You know, you had decided somehow that the hedonistic pathway that you were pursuing, even if there was some search for enlightenment in it, say with the Paul and the Alex, yeah, you weren't going to go down that route. Right. And you can imagine that, you know, you'd learned your lesson to some degree by yeah. watching your mother and her yes. and her boyfriends, that there was some real danger in that, right. the Timothy Leary danger, yeah. right? Enlightenment without wisdom, let's right. say. So you made a gesture, you cast that aside, and then you opened yourself up and the opening would be, well, right. I'm, operating under the presumption that something better could appear, yes. whatever that might be. Right. Okay, so now you said the first time you did that in the schoolyard, there was no real response, but yeah. you believe in retrospect that something nonetheless yes. changed. And then the next part of the story was this, yes. right? So you're out with your friends and you decide to do something right. different. Okay, so then, so now you're, that's a prayer. You're op That's a humble right. prayer. You're on your knees saying there's gotta be more. Okay, right. so then what happens? Well, I, you know, so I go back to school and, and the Christians there saw me and said, hey, Greg, uh, come to our Bible study. And, oh, okay. And I went and I, and I felt kind of uncomfortable there. So did, did you have friends outside that circle? I, I had a bunch of, <laughs> I had a bunch of low life friends. I literally, I was going to one school called Corona Damar High School that was kind of a, uh, a school attended by affluent kids. So I was not an affluent kid. 
Uh, we lived in a little apartment in, in that area. And so it was very different. I literally transferred to this other school, Corona de Mar High School to Harbor High, to change my identity. I said, I want to become a different person. I don't want to be the preppy guy that everybody knows and, and you know, I, I, you know, trying out for the football team, I was ultimately rejected, but I hung out with those kids because my grades were too low. But anyway, so I wanted to be a different person and I thought the drug culture had the answers. So mm. what happened ultimately was I transferred to another school where I had relative anonymity because people didn't know me like they knew me at the school I transferred right, from. Right. But in reality, I ended up becoming a different person, just not in the way I expected. So I look back in retrospect and I think, so you transferred to this new yeah. school so that you could get away from the preppy image and hang around with the yeah. the more drug oriented, yeah. and Be and that isn't what happened. You ended up well, <laughs> I, I, you ended up in the clutches of the Christians yeah, instead. I did. Wow, that was good. This was a good video. This was a good interview. But I want to take a couple a couple key uh, takeaways from this. Is that Jordan Peterson said this? He says, every aim is a prayer and every spirit that responds to your aim responds in a voice of the spirit of that aim. And then he goes on to say that if you're if you're possessed by, let's say, resentment, it's the eternal spirit of vengefulness that will make itself manifest in your heart. What does that mean? And here's why I like to look at what he says. And from a psychological standpoint, how does it point to scripture? The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It, it's, it's very simple. Things that took in this, taken us years to figure out psychologically from for, through professors and all this stuff. It's in the Bible. The Bible speaks for itself. It's so true. It is so true. And that is your mind governs everything. It governs everything. Where the mind goes, the man follows. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And I just think that was so powerful. And I think that uh, Greg Laurie's testimony was so awesome. You know, the, you know, the Bible says that that we are saved by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And you can't take that away. A lot of atheists will hear this and say, well, that's his that's bias because he's still just pointing to the Bible. But it, no, no, he's pointing to his testimony. And all he's doing is he's just pointing in a direction. Hey, listen, you don't got to follow me, but follow the follow just look into the direction I'm pointing you and just try to go that way and see for yourself. Just see for yourself this is real or not. Anyways, I thought that was cool. I love this interview. I love Greg Laurie too. When I seen this, I'm like, man, I got to find a clip because I know there's going to be something good and I found one. And it is on his testimony and prayer and what God did in his life and how God used the hippie days to kind of bring him, uh, shuttle him into the to the most precious faith. So anyways, guys, I hope you like this, uh, this uh, commentary reaction video. And if you like it, do me a huge favor, subscribe, like the video, share with a friend. It helps the algorithm. YouTube shares the video to more people when you do the work and help the channel. So anyways, I appreciate you so much. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. God bless.